Hey everybody, we picked up this Breadman two pound professional bread maker. I picked it up predominantly to make keto bread. I'm sure my wife has other plans for this besides keto bread. This one was picked up on Amazon for the cost of $130 on Amazon Prime. We're gonna try out a couple recipes from the book, make sure everything works, and then maybe my wife will try one of her own. We're just gonna dive right into this. Let's get started. Documentation. The main unit. Measuring cup, measuring spoon, mixer, bread pan, and that's it. Here we see a locking mechanism for the bread pan, coupling for the motor, and surrounding this is a heating element. The bread pan with all the ingredients would be lowered and simply locked into place by pushing down just like this. Before the ingredients are added, the mixer would be added to the bread pan. It would lock onto this assembly right here. It flips up in one direction and falls back down in the other to ensure it doesn't get stuck in the bread. There's a multitude of bread making options, even a jam option. Mine in particular is the low carb one, number nine. There's also loaf size, the menu setting for the bread options, bake, cross color, start, stop, and an LCD display. A viewing window and a place where you could add nuts or berries or whatnot to the bread at the correct interval. It'll drop it in automatically. The measuring spoon is pretty cool because you could adjust the value on the bottom as a slider and it adjusts the value that could be added on top. So yeah, it's an adjustable measuring spoon. Measuring cup is nice, ounces on one side and then on the other side it's got cups. Not much to say, it's a measuring cup. The book is laid out in instructions on one side and on the other side is all recipes and it's laid out by the different modes available on the unit. So that's very nice. There's a reoccurring theme in this book about the ingredients, the order that you add it, the buttons that you press, and then hit start, and you're ready to go. My wife wants to try the whole wheat bread first. Let's go shopping. Here's all the ingredients exactly as specified in the book. Half a cup of milk, quarter cup of water, quarter cup of cottage cheese, three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of honey, one and a half teaspoons of salt, three quarter cup whole wheat flour, two and a half cups bread flour, one three quarter teaspoon of yeast, and some seeds we added to the recipe. This was probably fabricated in Pyongyang, so I made sure it was perfectly washed both pieces before we continue. So we had the ingredients starting with the milk, and then the water, followed by the cottage cheese, then the butter, and the honey, and the salt. The whole wheat flour, we try and keep it on top, as well as the bread flour, providing a barrier between the wet and dry ingredients. Then we make a divot and put in the yeast. Applying power, the on switch was already set to on in the back. Open up the lid, have a look inside. Carefully lower the contents into the machine and pivot it back and forth to lock it in place. Close the lid. We're gonna add some flour seeds to the dispenser over here, so I'm gonna open that dispenser up. Just preload it with seeds, make them even, and then we'll close it. Snap it shut. Basically, you have three things. Choose whole wheat, size, cross color, and hit start. So we're going to select menu item three. Whole wheat, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to select the loaf size. One and a half. One and a half. Well, let's start with medium and see where it goes. Dark, light, medium. So we've selected all three, then we're gonna hit start. What the book doesn't explicitly mention for this setting is when you hit start, nothing happens. Aside from the fact that the timer starts counting down and you may hear some audible clicking, you don't even know if the bread machine is working because it's just kind of sitting there doing nothing. It has to do with uh, a soak if you're using whole wheat flour, but you don't know that if, unless you read every single page of the book. It doesn't expand upon rest period, how long the rest period is, what the audible noises are, the fact that they should be disregarded. And then there's other modes with rest periods like low carb, where it doesn't even mention it. Actually, low carb doesn't mention anything, like gluten free doesn't mention anything either. Very nice. In many wide with three, it's not for 30 minutes later before something actually starts happening on the machine. Incredible. This, by the way, is a complete failure of documentation because anybody using this machine for the first time is going to hit that start button 
and assume that the machine is broken, the clicking sound means that the motor doesn't work, they're going to call up and ask for a new machine because it's broken. I feel as though during this time, the temperature in here is mildly elevated. So, part of the process. And at 3.51 remaining, it opened the door that let all the seeds in right over here. I made an audible noise from a relay, and you can see that the seeds are all mixed in now into that uh, dough. 254 remaining and it's late at night and I'm not a baker but this is looking more like granola than dough but I'm just having faith in the machine so we're gonna look at it in a bit six beeps at 146 I don't know the significance of six beeps but with 146 remaining this is what we got 102 I would have expected would have risen it still looks like granola and I'm still holding that hope but seven minutes remaining now and <laughs> oh dear I got a mess on my hands. It's like one o'clock in the morning and it just finished. <laughs> Let's pull this out of the oven, see what we got. Yeah, not good. <laughs> it's one thirty in the morning. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow on the wife. It's the next morning, I got the boss looking over the shoulder. I'm cutting this science project in half. And clearly you can see that this never leavened. Right, so this is what we got. Oh, you wanna try it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It tastes like it would taste good. Yes. Like it wants to be good. I was extremely precise in the procedure trying to find out where I went wrong. It wasn't until reviewing the ingredients we found a typo in the book. This is unbelievable. I looked at some other ones, and I also found typos right here. Look, the difference between one and a half and two pounds has the same amount of water in it, same amount of sugar in it. The ingredients didn't change by volume. <laughs> no wonder this is garbage. Didn't have enough water. We're gonna remake it correct in the book's typos. I'll point out, because I didn't earlier, that the milk and water is at the correct okay. temperature. We are doing a two pound recipe this time. But that looks a lot more like dough and a lot less like granola. So I think we're on to something. This time there's an accumulation of humidity on the inspection class. I also believe this is a good sign. 254. I can't see in there's still humidity, but it looks like it's rising. I'm not allowed to open it. 119 now, and it is definitely rising, no doubt. It's all the way at the top. Hmm. Hmm. Now how do you get that out of there? I've learned that the handle needn't be pushed all the way to the side here, but I hadn't learned it at the time of this recording. So I'm going to figure out how to get this thing out without access to the handle, without destroying the bread. Take note of these next couple of seconds as I discuss later how not to lay the handle as you prepare the bread next time. And there we have it. Oh, Very look nice. at that. How you doing? And sure, the thing didn't get stuck in the bread. And the thing did not get stuck in the bread. And? She's like bread. Really? Yeah. No, we got mom inspecting the bread on FaceTime. The bread looks sunken on top. We were uh, going through a couple of theories as to why, but I guess outside of the pan already, since it was higher than usual, it probably doesn't cook because there's no pan around it to actually heat it as much towards the top so we're going to cut into it and see what we got this piece is from the top so it's definitely done it's just a matter of how it looks well now it's gone hey ma you want a bread machine now look at this you want a bread machine you know how long it would take me to finish one loaf of bread six years I'm stealing that now thanks it must be good because i can't get my hands on any mm, that's good bread I'll demonstrate one more time. This is where the pan ended. This batch came over the pan right over here. And we can see where it came over is where the distortion was, but it didn't affect the bread any. Looks like an all around good mixture of ingredients in this batch. The mechanism allowed for an even distribution of the sunflower seeds. This bread also stored well and remained consistent through the next couple of servings over the next couple of days. We'll move on now to batch number three. Batch three was the same as batch two, but used a six seed blend and a lot of it. This time we also had the handle cantered up like this. In case it spilled over, we'd have access to that handle. 
not only did this one come out really good, the presentation was almost perfect. And you do see this crater over here on the top left. So I turn it around. And my theory is, is that so many seeds were used that it actually changed the consistency where the entire recipe would have to be changed slightly to accommodate that. You just can't add one ingredient in mass and expect the bread to work. But that was it. Do it. I'm not going to spend the next couple of minutes showing you people sampling bread, but I am going to cut into this one to show you the consistency on the inside here. This one came out really nice. Take a look at that. That's really good. Steffi wants to try making a heifet soft, but using the whole wheat flour to do this. So one note, uh, I warmed up the milk. I added the butter to it so it would uh, soften a little bit. And then I put that in first. And then I added the sugar, the salt, the egg. Covered it with the flour and then put the yeast on top of it. We've set it for mode one. There it is doing its thing. We're just gonna let it skip to the end. Note I left the handle up somewhat easier to remove if the bread overflows. This one came out good for presentation. The bread itself looks good for even mixture, consistency. As far as I know about bread, it looks right for half itself. We'll cut the second piece to look inside. And half itself is different than regular bread and this one is using whole wheat flour so definitely something different but it seems good and it tastes good so we're gonna go with that put the half itself next to the bread we made previously just for comparison the left is 100 percent whole wheat and the right is a third mm -hmm. one disturbing issue inside the bread pan here and these detents are inside probably to turn the dough in a uniform manner uh we've only made three batches and we wash it out by hand it's not in the dishwasher and we don't use a scouring pad or anything like that you can see that teflon coating or whatever is already rubbed off i don't know what rubbed it off because it was there when we started our first batch so i'm gonna have to reach out to breadman and find out what's going on with this can you see that how it's worn away already yeah that's not good so that concludes my review of this Breadman two pound bread machine. Some weirdness in the coating on the bread pan. Terrible, terrible flaws in the documentation. The two I found could make or break ownership for a new customer of such an appliance. But the hardware itself seems to do the job. I hope you found this video enjoyable, educational, entertaining, and insightful. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. I'll be doing another video using this in an attempt to make keto bread. Which is my prime reason for purchasing it. A link will be posted in the top right when that comes out. Again, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?